and has managed Newport County and he is the current manager of Warsaw. Welcome to the podcast, Michael Flynn. Thanks, Tom. Um, Thank you. Cheers. Before we start, we just wanted to say that if throughout this podcast, if you have any questions for us about anything about our podcast or you have a question about autism, then please speak. We'd like to answer your questions too. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> We like to start podcasts with some random questions before we start talking about your career. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go. Well, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Who is the most famous person in your phone book? Oh. There's a couple in there. There's a couple. Uh, I'd have to say Pep Guardiola. Yeah. I'd so say that. Like Steven Gerrard. <laughs> oh, and then Thierry Henry. Yeah, there's a few. Okay. If you could trade lives with anyone for a day, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's a difficult one. So if I don't say my wife, I'd have to say my <laughs> wife because the amazing work she does <laughs> with the children, looking after the kids and, and, and helping run her, her parents' uh, business as well. So I'll have to say my wife, Victoria. It's the same answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you could have, have any superpower, what would you have and why? I would love to have the superpower of hindsight. So I wouldn't make any more mistakes. I would know everything. And I would also put the lottery numbers on before they go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, last question. You can stop one crime forever, but the way you stop it from ever happening again is by committing that crime yourself. After you've committed it, that crime will never happen again anywhere in the world. What crime are you choosing and why? Oh, that's a very difficult one. Very difficult. <laughs> I would have to say murder because, yeah. um, you know, if, if it was one more sacrifice I'd have to make, then, you know, to to protect million, millions of, of innocent people, then I think that would be better off. That's all, comments, isn't it? That would be better all around. Right. Yeah. Thank you for answering those questions. Let's chat about your career. We want to take you back to the beginning and talk about your childhood. What are your memories of growing up and did you always want to be a footballer? Well, yeah, I grew up in Newport, South Wales, in a place called Pilgwentley. So, Catholic. Lived my great auntie and great uncle. Um, you know, still see my mum and my dad as well. No brothers, no sisters, so I'm an only sibling. So at times it was related, yeah. At times I can't. I've got three siblings. Oh, well technically two siblings, one half sibling. So yeah, at time at times it's uh, it can be lonely, but other times it's it's peaceful and you can reflect and, and have that you time or me time. So that's good. <laughs> There's no such thing as me time at <laughs> my place. <laughs> I grew up in a in a multicultural um, area of Newport Pill. So we had all kinds of nationalities uh, living there. So it was from Welsh, English, Italian, Indian, Pakistani, Somalian. Um, Yikes! Uh, the, the Car <laughs> people from the Caribbean. Um, so we, it was a very, very multicultural place. And it was something that I'm proud of be coming from because um, we all got on really well. We had arguments as normal, everyday people, kids growing up do. <laughs> we played together, we hung out together, and we all had a, a mutual respect for each other. So I think that for me going forward and understanding, especially the way the world is or has been, um, before I was a kid and now since I'm an adult, I think that has given me a very, very good head start into understanding different ethnic backgrounds um, as well as, as being respectful to, to my own. So you, know, you were out from Newport well. Yeah. So I think my dad, my dad said he spoke to you because I think my brother's daughter and your daughter go to the same school, did you? Uh, you no, no, Dion to... went to Dufferin, but okay. Dion, yeah, Dion's 22 now. Right? Yeah, so, so. There's some connection. My dad, my dad said he sees you somewhere in Killian at some point anyway. I'm probably in the past. <laughs> so yeah, I'm from, I'm from Newport. School then. Um, so yeah, it's a wonderful part of the world and so I'm trying to buy it as much as possible but she moved a few, few years ago now. So yeah, 
Small world. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, growing up, we used to play all different sports, golf, rugby, um, baseball. Um, we had some really good people that would, look, you know, who would guide us in the right way. Mm. You know, people like Norman Parcell, Andy Beattie. Um, those kind of people from Newport who are well known in that area and they're very, very well respected because of the amount of time they've, they've given the youth over the years. So, um, yeah, I'm very proud of that growing up there. All right. You made it your debut for Newport County in 1999. How did it feel playing for your hometown? Well, it's that long ago now. I can't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, I, it's obviously it's always good. Newport won in the league, and I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I think it was the Beza Homes Division. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure on that, but it was good. Um, Tim Harris was the manager. Uh, I still still you know remember a few of the names there. Um, you know, one or two, or definitely one has passed away. You know, but a couple of them are, are oh, friends. Sad friends of mine as well you know we've stayed in touch so look it's always been you always want to play there but the most important thing for me was seeing that Newport County was Newport County AFC sorry was was back and um, you know because obviously they they went out of business and it was great to see them reformed because I grew I, I missed that that period in my in my childhood you know the ages of eight onwards to to about 15 really before they started getting back up to a level that you know people went and supported so yeah it was good to see that the the city had their their club back you then you then joined barry town and on 25th of july 2001 you played in a game do you remember what game it was yeah i'm gonna have a rough guess and say it was um against fc Porto. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah. yeah. Portuguese champions. They've won a European Cup. Yeah, huge, huge club. They had some fantastic players there. People like Deco was playing who went on to, to play for Chelsea. Um, you know, Jorge Costa, the Portuguese captain, was there um, playing as well. So, yeah, it was fantastic. Apart from when we was over there, we lost 8 0. We lost 8 0 over there. And at Barry, we, we managed to, to win 3 1. and. You scored? And I scored a goal, yeah. So, yeah, that was a that was a special moment because it was uh, it was a great result for Welsh football. Uh, you moved from club to club throughout your career. Why did you choose to do that rather than stay at one club for a longer period? Well, it's di it's difficult, you know. At, at times there was, <clears throat> at times you wasn't wanted, you know. Time to move on. Uh, other times I wanted to move on because I wanted to, well, I thought I was going to play at a, you know, a higher division and I've done that a few times. I actually, you know, played for three of the clubs for three years each, which is not too bad. You know, Wigan, Bradford and, and Gillingham. So those three, three I was there for, for three seasons. Um, Newport then was there um, a bit longer. You know, on and on, on and off the pitch, Huddersfield was really a one year. The manager come in, wanted his own players in, so I had to um, I had to move on. And, and Blackpool was was quite the same. It was um, it was a move that I went to because they were in the higher division, and it didn't work out. So then. Really? We talked to a lot of people, and Blackpool tended to pop up more than. <laughs> Black, yeah, lots of yeah. For some reason, lots of our guests have played for Blackpool. Yeah. 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 I know that's fact. It's it is oh, actually, it? Apparently, not everyone had the, the best experience there. Yeah, it was. No. It's not going into detail. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> personal. It might be nothing against Blackpool, sure, but yeah, quite a lot. Of Blackpool's not quite a lot, actually. Lovely yeah. beach. Yes. Yeah, I would. I've never been to a beach in my life. No, no. here. <laughs> At which club do you think you played your best football and why? I'd probably say, I'd have to say it was Gillingham. Um, why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was just playing regular in and out and I hadn't any, had any injuries at that point. Um, so, you know, that, that was in, in the championship in League One. So, scoring, I think I scored 25 goals in a in 100 games from midfield, which was good. Um, so that was consistently 
the best I've played, the best team I've played in is Wigan, um, where we had two promotions in three years. And I played with some fantastic, fantastic players, Matt Jackson, Jimmy Bullard, Lee McCulloch, John Filan, Leighton Baines, Andy Liddell, Neil Roberts, those kind of players. Yeah, you a few. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of lot of good players at Wigan, and and that was one of the reasons why I moved on from Wigan because I was behind quite a lot of players, and I wanted to play regular. Mm. You had four spells at Newport County, and in 2013, Newport played Wrexham in the Conference Playoff Final at Wembley. You won this game too now, what are your memories of that and getting Newport back into the football league? My memory, yeah, I can, I can remember it like it was yesterday, I hated the day, I couldn't relax being from Newport, I know what it meant, I've seen the hard work that so many people have put in to try to get the club back into the football league after a 25 year absence, um, you know, our, our manager Justin Edinburgh, God rest his soul, who's passed away as well, um, was, um, passed away. Passed yeah. away. Right. So he, you know, he was he was key in me coming back. You know, he, he believed that we could get promoted, and I believed in him. And um, we managed to do it against Wrexham. And we didn't play the best that day. They were they were probably the better team in the first half. But afterwards, it was unbelievable. You know, a lot of the a lot of the players stayed up in London. I went back to to Newport with my with my daughter and my, my friends, and um, it was very entertaining. There's no better team of beers than from Newport and Wrexham, <laughs> especially at Wembley. Yeah, look, it's obviously the North and South rivalry, but you know, I'd like to see Wrexham back in the Football League. It's, it's good for Welsh football, and, and I think it's, you know, the Phil Parkinson, he was my manager at Bradford, so I know Phil well, and I'd like to see them do well. Two Welshmen having a conversation about the Welsh <laughs> football. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like Wrexham are Possibly back next year to be playing next year. They've been saying it for a long time, so you know it's a tough league to get out of. Um, you know they've got some good back in there with um, the famous yeah. Hollywood. How do you feel that? Because obviously you got sold for Saturday. Yeah. Obviously they've had a big investment from the class of '92, and obviously Ryan Reynolds and Rob have come into Exxon. Yeah. So more and more people are coming in buying lower league clubs, and yeah, so it's only benefit for the league, is it? Yeah. Oh. It depends which way you look at it. If you're at those clubs and you're getting paid well, then yeah. then yeah. But you know, it, it's it's. I think it's it's good for the for the community. You know, on seeing what what is happening at Wrexham and that was needed. Um, you know, they were they were struggling. They were could have gone out of business, and I wouldn't want to see that for any football club because um, you know I, I've seen what I've seen the effect it had on Newport. Um. How did the move into management come about? And in 2017, you became manager in Newport County. Can you tell us about that, please? Yeah, look, I just knew I wanted to be a manager from my playing days at Gillingham. It was something that I wanted to do. I done my badges when I was playing. I did a degree in sports journalism and media uh, at Staffordshire University, which isn't too far away. Um, so I was always thinking about life after football, i.e. playing. Um, so I, I, I wanted to do that and fortunately I was a coach, I, I got into to coaching in Newport, I started with the academy and, and then um, yeah unfortunately the manager lost his job and they gave me a chance and it's worked out. Um, is it true you did your coaching badges with, is it Thierry? Thierry. Thierry Henry and Mikel Arteta. <laughs> yeah, so is it true you did a coaching badge with Thierry Henry and Mikel Arteta? And yeah. So what were they like? Yeah, they were amazing. Absolutely amazing. There was a lot of good people on there. You know, there was people like um, Colin Caton, um, you know, they, who works in the Welsh League as well. Kenny Brown, who was my manager at Barry, is, is now at West Ham. Uh, Andy Morrison, who, who's worked a long time in, in the Welsh League. It wasn't, you know, everybody was treated the same. And Thierry, Mikel, the you know the, the big the big names on the course were, were absolutely fantastic. You know, Pep Linders was at Liverpool. But for me it was good to see how, you know, top top well, arguably Thierry's probably one of the best to ever play in the Premier League. Um, to see how they see the game, get to talk to them and, and it is you know, it is it's it's an amazing thing that the, the FA 
uh, Welsh FA do with, with the coaching courses because it does give you a, I'm going to say more of a, a broader outlook to, to, to manage and, and, and to coach. Um, what was the Newport squad like when you took over and did you realistically feel you could keep them in the football league? I could have a laugh and a joke here, but I'd say that we weren't very good because we were bottom of the league. But yeah, oh, no. there was um, no, there were some, there were some good players there. There were some players with experience, um, and did I honestly think I could keep them up? Mm, I'm not sure, but I believed that we could win a few games and, and put some pride back into the into the football club. And thankfully, we managed to win seven and draw one out of the last twelve and stayed up and on on the last day of the season. Okay. Your your first season in charge of Newport was a very memorable one. When you took over, you were bottom of the table by 11 points, and then on the final match of the season, you beat Notts Country 2-1 with a goal in the 89th minute that kept you up. Can you tell us your memories of that game, please? Again, it was a game I didn't enjoy. Um, oh, no! <laughs> my, again, that game, you know, being from Newport again, I'm thinking... These fans waited, you know, twenty five years to to get back into the football league, and after four years, they could be going out of it. Um, so there was a seven minute period towards the end of the game that we were going out of the league because the other teams around us were doing better than us. So, you know, for that seven minutes, it was quite I say lonely on the touchline. Um, but Mark O'Brien popped up and has made a. A name for itself that will never be forgotten in in Newport County AFC um, folklore because he he saved not just the club he said you know for me it, it, what those players done that day they stopped the club going out to out of uh, out of business again. Okay. It's once you go down out of the football league it's it's very hard to get back up. It's it's so difficult and you know especially then you see a lot of the big clubs paying a lot more than Newport could afford at that point. You know, let's not forget it was supporters owned. So it's not um, like you've got a big sugar daddy there. Yeah. You know, they, everything is very, very carefully run. And, you know, it's, um, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's a long way back if, you, if they go out of the league. Um, we want to stop the play through and play a quick game with you. We have done this with all the previous managers we have spoken to on the podcast, such as Harry Redknapp, Sam Allardyce and Dave Jones. We are going to name some players that you have managed, and I want you to tell us a story about the player or tell us about them. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. Uh, Padre Amund. Padre Amund. Well, he was my... Uh... First big signing at Newport, I would say we paid a transfer fee for him. Fantastic professional. Um, a good story I've got, which is when when we were locked in during lockdown and the season. Ah, uh, the dreaded. Yeah, the <laughs> dreaded lockdown and. Let's uh, not speak of that of what of the name of the thing that caused us lockdown. <laughs> yeah, we won't. And um, he went for a run the one day, so <laughs> he started running. And he carried on and on, and he uh, he's never done never done a marathon, <laughs> but he ended up doing a marathon in two hours and fifty eight minutes, <laughs> which, which was absolutely fantastic. His and, poor feet oh, must have been telling him off for yeah. days afterwards. <laughs> so that's that's how uh, dedicated he, he he is. You know, he's playing a walking name part of Podge, and um, you know, he's uh, he's a fantastic lad. Joe Ledley. Joe. Well, <laughs> I can tell this one's going to be good. Yeah, no, listen. <laughs> you can't, you can't. He's, he's a Welsh legend, Joe. You know, I spoke to him the other day when he was over in um, Dubai, Doha, watching watching Wales. He um, he's famous for his dance, his Welsh dance at what? Jimmy <laughs> in the Euros. You'll have to Google it. <laughs> when you finish later, you can Google it. But great lad, Joe. He um, he's somebody who again he's played at the highest level. Play for Celtic as well, which is good. Um, but he, you know, he's somebody that you know I would have loved to have had his career. He is, um, you know, he's a funny, funny lad, quite quiet. But what he says to me, he makes the room laugh. <laughs> nice. Um, 
Kevin Elliston. Oh, <laughs> I can tell you some stories about Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, I, I don't think we're keeping it for a podcast. Um, I, you know, I'll have to be be careful with it. <laughs> Kev, practical joker all the time, always messing about. Good as gold. Great to have in the change rooms. I've played with Kev, and I've managed him. Um, fantastic fitness levels for somebody his age. And the one day he was winding up a goalkeeper called Lenny Pidgeley. We were uh, all playing at Bradford. Well, I'm looking if this didn't end well for, for Kevin. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it didn't. And uh, he was winding up Lenny. Lenny's come for a cross, missed it. And he starts singing the, the, the so, snowman song to him. And then, um, so everybody's laughing, winding Lenny Pidgeley up. Uh-oh, and, uh, I got the other Kev goes to put a cross in, still laughing, kicks the floor. And rips his thigh from from his oh, knee, oh. from his knee up to his. Uh, hey. And then Len, and Lenny Pidgeley decided to laugh at him. Um, but yeah, that was came all over. <laughs> Took it well. He was out for a long time, but uh, he was always yeah. the life and soul of, of the dressing room. Yeah, this we interviewed this interviewed someone, and it was brought up that while their players went to cut triangle shaped holes. Into the, into the players, yeah. yeah. They do that. practical jokes on that. Yeah, oh, they do no. that. <laughs> uh, next up is Nicky Maynard. Nicky. I didn't manage Nicky for a long time. Uh, for, for very long. Um, he always used to score against us, so he was he was a very, very good striker. Again, played at, at a very, very good level. Cardiff, Bristol City as well, he played, so... He, he was good. I had Nicky towards the end of his his, um, his career, uh, but he scored a very very important goal for us in the playoffs. Um, in the playoffs semi final, he scored in the hundred nineteenth minute against Forest Green, which put us through for another trip to Wembley. Um, Connor Wilkinson. Oh, well he's out there now. <laughs> he's, um, he's he's back in full training there. Am I allowed to say that? He's actually. Am I allowed to say that? He's so, out there. Yeah, he's been awesome. um, he's been injured for a, for a long time in in terms of football. Ouch! What did he do? He done his cruciate knee ligament. So that he, sounds painful. Yeah, so he had to have an operation, um, and he's done a lot of rehab. But he's back in today, and he's looking very well. But it's Connor, very again life and soul of the place. He gets on well with the lads, and um, I'm I'm very very pleased to have him back. I'm a one to ask about one of them. New York County fans asked me to ask you about Alan Woods. Yes. He didn't, didn't manage you, obviously. He's passed away again, sadly. Yeah. You used to, used to play Newport. Do you know him? Alan you? Woods, I knew him very, very well. Um, he, he, was my, he was my coach um, in the youth team at Newport. He, Alan was somebody I had the utmost respect for. He was a tough man. He was a very, very respected man. And he was somebody that I kept in contact until until the day he died. Really, he was. Um, I can't speak highly of Alan. He highly enough of Alan. He was somebody that I miss there yeah, still. And um, you know, it's um, it was a pleasure to have to have known him. Thanks, Ronson. The following season, you beat Leeds in the FA Cup, and then. Drew with Spurs and then went to Wembley to play them. You really provided the fans with some great memories. Yeah, and like I said, you know the fans there have been through enough over the years trying to get back into the football league. So for being able to provide um, those memories for the for the fans is is what it's about because they'll be there a lot longer than than I will or the players will. They they keep the club going and. You know, same as every every fan. You know, the Warsaw fans here, they'll they'll be a lot here a lot more, a lot longer than I will. I mean, I would love to to provide them with some special memories as well. How would you describe? How would you describe yourself as a manager? Ooh, depends. <laughs> depends if you won won or lost. Um, no, it was no. Good, in. no, I um I, I try and keep consistent. You know, I'll. I'll my door's always open for the players, I'm approachable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm demanding. I want them to, to, to make the most of their careers. 
but they also know that they can come and talk to me with any problems. So the, you know, this day now you've got to be more than just a manager. You know, you've got to be a, almost a family liaison, a, a friend um, in terms of away from the pitch. You know, you've got to be there for that support, and more importantly, you've got to be somebody that the players trust. Because, and that's on and off the off the field. So if they don't trust you, yeah. they're not going to go and perform. And, and, and uh, everything does fall apart. Yes, exactly. Um, <clears throat> the FA Cup success continued the following season as you beat Leicester City, Middlesbrough, and then you play one of the best teams in the world. Uh, Man City, can you tell us about that cup run, please? Yeah, it was it was crazy. You know, we uh, managed to beat beat um, Leicester in the third round, but we had a very very difficult um, game in the second round where we um, we drew with Wrexham away. They were a lot better than us. They deserved to win the match. And then we went back to to, to Newport, the Morning Parade, and, and beat them quite comfortably actually. Then we 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 obviously Podrick and Mann scored late on in the game against Leicester to put us through. And then we had a re, uh, we went to Middlesbrough. We were losing one 0 in the ninety third minute. We uh, we put on a midfielder called Matthew Dolan, who actually used to play for Middlesbrough Academy. Put him on. And he scored with the last kick of the game to make it a, a replay at, at Newport again. And then again that night we played exceptionally well, well and won 2 0. But at that point we knew we were playing Man City because the draw had already been done before the replay. So um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, it was you know it was it was just special. Uh, you, you just... I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> what does FA mean? Football Association. Okay. <laughs> So you, there, Tom, didn't I? <laughs> you get quite a name for um, FA Cup or and League Cup. You do well in League Cup players in big teams. Yeah. In the third round of the Cup at the moment, Warsaw. Yeah, and look, it, it's it's good because, like I said, it's it's something that the supporters deserve. It's something that I want to do well in and, and extra players, money. extra money, ex ex uh, exactly. And it's very important, um, you know, to keep the club in a healthy financial position. Um. What is it like uh, coming up against Pep Guardiola? Oh, it was just, it was surreal. He, you know, he's you know the best in the business. Um, him and Jurgen Klopp are uh, uh, at the top of the tree at the moment, um, and he's just so down to earth, so so friendly, so accommodating, and um, he's somebody that I respect wholeheartedly and admire, and. Not just that, he was a fantastic player as well, but even more, the most important thing, he's a, he's, he's a better human being because he is a, a special, special man. Is it true that... Jürgen. Jürgen. Klopp. Klopp invited you to watch Liverpool train? Well, it wasn't quite Jürgen, but it was his number two, uh, Pep Linders, who was on the Welsh coaching course as well, and I've, I've got the note. No Pat um, over a no long way. time there. <laughs> so um, it was brilliant, but but Jurgen was there. I you know I managed to to have a sit down with him and, and speak to him. And again, with with me being a Liverpool supporter, you know that was a dream come true because um, Jurgen Klopp is you know he, he's he's special and again he's somebody who's brought the good times back on a consist I would say more of a consistent basis for for Liverpool. Um, can you tell us about a day in the life of Michael Flynn, the football manager? What does a typical day look like for you? Long. Um, you know, we've got to be organised. You know, I've got good staff around me. So the staff uh, are, are exceptionally well. You know, even the likes of Tom, he's doing a lot of the organisation for the for the media work. Um, you know, we, we, we come in early, plan the session, you know, after we find out who's training and who's not with regarding injuries, plan the session, what do we want to get out of the session, we, we sit there and brainstorm in terms of right, what do we need for the forthcoming fixture, who, you know, what formations to play, how can we hurt them, and then how can we translate that into a training session for us to take into a game. So it's not just, we don't just do 
one thing on the Friday before the Saturday game. You know, it's it's a progressive progressive week of how we can hurt the opposition as well as carry on our our philosophy of, of trying to play football through the thirds. Okay, so I am really sorry, but we have to ask you about the following season. You uh, had an amazing season and reached the playoff final against Trump. Yeah. You lost this game 1-0 as they scored in the 119th minute. What are your memories of that day? I hope well, we didn't ask them. <laughs> one, one of the players who played in that game for Tramia um, is, is here now, Manny Monk, Manny or Monk. And we should have had a penalty in the 84th, 85th minute. And it was a manual who made the foul. And the first thing I asked him when I came here, you know, he was forgotten then, we can't change it. Was it a penalty? Yeah, was it a penalty? And he said it was 100% a penalty. So that just made me worse then. <laughs> so it brought up old memories. Uh, but yeah, no, I was, I was extremely proud of the players. We had a man sent off um, towards the end of the game as well. So we had 10 men for over, over half an hour. Uh, but it was a very, very disappointing day because I wanted to give um, the fans a promotion and we couldn't quite do it. I didn't quite do it. Um, a few seasons later, you reached the playoff final again. Same answer. <laughs> different and, uh, names. Yeah. This is going to end badly. Sa same answers, different names. Can I go on that one? No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> You lost 1-0 in extra time to a terrible penalty decision against uh, Morecambe from the referee. What are your memories of that? Again, we should have had a penalty and they shouldn't have. So we were very unfortunate. Um, but look, that's football. It happens and... You want to hide under the desk now. <laughs> what, doesn't, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, as they say. And well, it, just, it wasn't a scorpion, it can't, yeah. a foot, I doubt a football can kill you unless exactly. it hits you right in the face. Exactly. And it could, uh, probably. And it's something that just makes me stronger to, to get promotion. Because they were, I, we watched the videos back yesterday, and both pound decisions, because the Morecambe one was outside the box, wasn't it? Yeah. And the other one was very light. But obviously now it's in the... I don't know if they have VAR in the finals now, do they? Or do they I don't know, they probably... Uh, do they know? Have they started them this year? It might have started now this season. It's um, frustra uh, frustrating isn't it, to lose, especially an extra time to, to a decision that actually wasn't the right decision. Yeah, but again, it's... Maybe the referees didn't have enough caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah couldn't keep on playing. But, it, you know, you just need to... Um, you need that little bit of lady luck at those times, and, and we haven't had it. Um, you left Newport towards the start of the following season. Did the high and missing out on two promotions take their toll on you? No, not at all. It was just I felt I needed a fresh, cha uh, fresh challenge and a little break. I've been there for a long time, and um, you know I wanted to step aside and let somebody else have a go and and see, you know, what, where they could take them. That's a good way to handle it. Yep. <laughs> we have a few questions from Newport County fans who have got in touch with us on the podcast. The first one is, did you and the chairman fall out over the signing of Joe Ledley? Not at all. Um, That's good. <laughs> That's who anyone wants are two managers trying to murder each other. Very true. But not murder. Obviously not. No one got killed. You were very successful at Newport, but what were your biggest hurdles? Other than, other than the actual hurdles. Biggest hurdles at, at times is, you know, the, I'd say it's a couple of things. It was keeping the squad together, you know, because we had some really, really good players. And the other thing was dealing with the pitch at the, at the time, because the, the, the pitch was used by two rugby teams as well. Oh. So it wasn't very good. Um, rugby to the face like, from time to time, I bet. Yeah, it was. And uh, it was very hard to to keep that um, the way you want it to play. Yeah. So why, why, why did you move from Spitty Park to one play? Oh, that was right? the best move the club did. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the best the best thing. It's much better location for the supporters in terms of getting that. And um, 
nobody wants to play on a pitch with an athletics track mm -hmm. around it. You know, it's no. Uh, yeah, you it's don't want to. Yeah, no one wants to risk throwing a, or kicking a ball and it landing right in, on someone's head. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want the rugby, you know, you don't want the rugby ball coming into play. Um, was it was it difficult to manage a side? where you grew up in and knew so many people and were so attached to yeah it, it is people underestimate you know everybody thinks they know you or want to make up rubbish about you or yeah i don't like it when people make up rubbish about or, others. you know when you you sat your family or what you know everybody wants to talk and i've got no problem with that as long as it's done in the right way um but when you're doing it day in day out week in week out year in year out you know it does does you know catch up with you and you know it's something that one of the reasons why i thought i i needed a break um as a manager you have to sell players and manage players in the dressing room how did you find letting players go and did you enjoy looking after players? Look, letting players go is never never easy because it's it's a you know it's it's a player's career. But it, it has to be done, you know, I had it done I had it done to me a number of times over over the career, over my career and you know as long as it was done in a respectful way or at least an honest way, um, you know, then you can look yourself in the mirror. You know, being looking after the players is it's very re rewarding because I'm a father. I know, you know, what what it is to put your arm around somebody at times or be there for when somebody needs to to open up to you. And um, it, you know, it, it is a, a good feeling that you can you can hopefully help not just improve them as a player but as a person as well. Um. When Mick McCarthy left Cardiff City in 2021, you were favourite to take over Cardiff at one stage. Did the club ever contact you about becoming their manager? No, never. Nothing at all. Rude! That is surprising. <laughs> <laughs> How would that conversation go with you? Would you be a Newport manager and go move to Cardiff without something interesting? No, would have bothered me. I'm ambitious. Yeah. Um, Cardiff's in the championship, so yeah, I'd be a fool to to turn. Sorry, they were floating around the top, and I thought <laughs> thought it'd be a good move, maybe. Obviously, they never came back. Yeah, listen, they you know Cardiff, they they've, they've got um, they manage it now, and they are they're going. You know, Steve has just lost his job earlier in the season. So Mark is in there now, and um, again for Welsh football, I hope Cardiff City do well. In February 2022, you then became the manager at Walsall. Why did you take this job, and why did you have, uh, and did you have any other offers? Sorry. Uh, one or two other offers, which I won't disclose. Um, All right, well, no need. But yeah, I I I liked the the setup. Um, I felt it was time to get back in. You know, I'd been out for four months. I had some very very special family time you know over christmas which i have i've never had never had with my children or even as an adult because i've always been playing football over the christmas period mm. um we managed to go to lapland with, with the children as well so that was good never been to lapland and i think i was more excited than, <laughs> than my little boys um but yeah you know look, i don't want to be out of work for for too long it was the time to <clears throat> to get back in and I've, having spoken to um, Lee Pomlet, the, the chairman and, and Jamie Fullerton at the time I felt this was uh, the right place and um, thankfully it's, it's going okay at the moment. Did you find it easier managing a club you have no you, club you have no previous connections with like when you were at were Newport manager? It's, it, it's no, it's not easier at all because I put the same I put the same pressure on myself to do as well for Walsall Football Club as I did for Newport County AFC. So you know, I'm, if I was managing Manchester United or Liverpool, I'd be doing exactly the same. 
you put that pressure on yourself because you want to win and you want to you want to be successful. So no, um, the only the only difference is is that um, you have no idea who's who. <laughs> yeah, and you know at, at times, you know it's um, you do get a little bit more of uh, I'm going to say peace when you're out with your family. What is your least and most favourite things about being a football manager? Least favourite thing is when you lose a game. I hate losing. It upsets me. It, um, it, it can spoil your weekend, in, you know, in, not in the week. So I don't take my, I wouldn't take my professional um, mood home to my family because it's not their fault. Um, but it can. It can get you down yeah, when you lose a game because I want to win every game, and uh, that's that's what it is. And the best feeling is when you win. You know, when you're seeing your the yeah. players work hard, carry out and implement the the plan that we we set, because it shows that your hard work is paying off. Okay, can you give three bits of advice for a first time manager who's taken over a club in week two? Oof. Yeah, get staff in who you trust, stick to your principles, and believe in yourself. <laughs> I like that. What is the realistic expectations for Walsall this season? I don't want to say too much on that because the, the Walsall fans will be listening to this and they'll <laughs> hold me to it and put pressure on me. Uh -huh. but I want to finish. I want to finish as, as hard as we can. Um, I would love to get into the top three. It's going to be tough at the minute because two two out of the three uh, at the minute were there uh, of, of having fantastic seasons so far. Um, but yeah, it's just about improving year after year than, than where we were at last year. Okay. Um, you have a contract with Warsaw until 2024 at the moment, I think. Where do you want Warsaw to be in two years' time? I'd love it to be in League One. You know, that, that'd be the aim. Um, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's a club that I'm really enjoying my time at. Uh, we've got new owners with Travella, uh, who are based in, in the US. They're fantastic people. They, they're ambitious. They've got the same drive and determination as myself. And like I said, Lee Ponger was really key in, in me coming here and I would love nothing more than to, to give Lee a promotion. Um, Mike, we've got a few questions from Warsaw fans on Twitter. I'm going to ask you one or two of them. Yeah. So the first one comes from Billy Gray who asks, can you ask me about Ronan Ma? Is it Ronan Ma? Mayor? Ronan Mayer, yeah. yeah. We saw him briefly in pre-season, he's had a few minutes on the pitch. He looks a fantastic young talent. What are your expectations for him in the future? Well, Ronan needs to keep working um, as hard day in, day out and keep improving. He's got a, you know, he's a very, very good footballer and he's somebody who, who I've got a lot of time for. He's got, he's got the right attitude at the moment and I, I want him to have a very successful career. Right, the next one says, not a question, this is from Mitchell Harvey who says, let him know we're all behind him, glad his ideas are starting to show on the pitch and we all know he's the man for the job. Hope Trevella back in in January, as we all want him to take us to League One and beyond. Well, thanks for that. And you know, it's um, it, was, it was a difficult start with with the injuries that we had. Um, you know, but but it's um, it's a long season, and nothing is is won in in uh, November or December. So we've got to keep going and, and keep working our as hard as we can and try and, and try and get it in the right area of the, of the table. Mm. And the last one from Twitter is from James Francis who says, are there any positions in the team that you would like to strengthen in January? Yeah, there's a few, but I'll keep those uh, ideas to myself. Yeah, you're, you're exercising your right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, last, last few, Tom. Mm. Uh, was it? No, no, yeah. Uh, and a personal question for you, where do you want to be in five years time? Five years time, I want to be a manager in the championship. Um, that's that's where I want to be. I want to be, um, yeah, I want to be in the championship at least. Okay. On our social media, we asked Newport and Warsaw fans to describe you in one word. 
Do you want to hear what they said? Uh, Not yeah. really. No. <laughs> We're gonna do it anyway. Yeah, but go on. Go on, it's fine. Um, passionate, loyal, legend, saviour, top bloke, hard work, working, and caring. Would you agree with these comments? I think they're being very kind there. <laughs> um, you know, look, a, a, another thing I can I can say about both sets of fans, they're they're good people. Um, you know, Walsall is very very similar to Newport in terms of you know how how the people are. The only difference I would say is is, is twice as big. Walsall is twice the size of Newport, but there's some fantastic genuine people in in both. In, in Newport City and 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 Walsall, so you know they're the people that were the bloodline, um, and the the key people in <laughs> in both football clubs and for both you know for for both sets of supporters. I, you know I've got nothing but respect and admiration from both. So um, I'll just check my research now. So you've gone eight games and beaten. You're currently tenth in the league with Salford away on Saturday. It's been a I don't think that's necessarily turned around, but look at the results of you in a good period at the moment. How coming into a new team, this is your first full season, what sort of changes do you think you have to make in the summer, or did you make any changes to I don't know, see the progression that you're currently seeing with the team? Yeah, the biggest thing was the mentality change. You know, um, it, it was something that I've said open and honestly in, in the interviews that I've done over the summer and the fans forum that I attended to is a mentality change and for that you need everybody you don't just need the players or just the staff or the players and the staff you need the supporters you need the owners you need every single person to be pulling in the same direction and you know thankfully at the minute we've got that because um, you know we, we've managed to turn things around at times I would say we were playing better in games that we've lost than than we are at the moment, even though we're winning. I know that's that's crazy, but it's it's just something that I feel that we that we were, um, and I knew we weren't too far away, and it wasn't something that was overly concerning me. You know, don't get me wrong. The longer it goes on, the the, the bigger the, the burden gets. But um, I was always confident that me and the staff and the players would would turn it around. Um, before we finish, we would like to play a game with you. That we play with all our guests. The game is called Wrong Answers Only. <laughs> we would, people will ask you a range of questions and you have to give us the wrong answer. Are you ready? <laughs> Go on, then. Wrong answers. I love this game. Favourite ground you played at? Glanford Park. Is that the one with the rugby? <laughs> no. <laughs> Best player you have ever signed? Best player I've ever signed. Yeah, that's what I remember, my answer only. <laughs> Joe Riley. Oh no, I'm here. How long of your career? Losing in the final. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite manager you came up against? Uh-oh. <laughs> Steve Evans. Oh no, I'm not here. <laughs> the best thing about Michael Flynn is... His haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every week on the podcast, we like our guests to ask questions to each other, so we get the guests to ask the question, but they have no idea who the question is going to be for. This week's question comes from our previous guest, former, which was former Premier League striker Kevin Davis, and he asked, what one action in your career would you change and why? Oof. Um... Just going back to the power of hindsight. Yeah, power of hindsight. Um, <laughs> what do you go back and change in one action? What, what, would I, what would I get back and change? Um, a couple. Like one, one or two of the, the, the decisions I made in terms of leaving leaving a club to go to another one. When at the time you think it's the right, the right thing to do. Um, and maybe looking back, it, it wasn't. You know, for example, leaving Wigan when I did, I shouldn't have. I should have stuck in there and, um, and had a chance to play in the Premier League. The other thing is I would probably have done, you know, with, with everything that's come in now, the, the way the players look after themselves, I wish you know, I'd done more gym work in terms of, of getting you know, 
like just being the best I could be, you know, because I didn't really like the gym as much. Although I was very fit, I was fit. There was no no fat on me. There was there was always more. But um, that I think I can do. And, and looking back, you know, and looking at the players do it now, I think it would have benefited me. Um, could you do the same thing? Please, can you think of a question for our next guest, please? But we aren't going to tell you who the guest is. The question could be anything you want. So they're all sports sports people. Yeah, yeah no, it's obviously it's, it's, it's Sam Allardyce, Kevin Davis. Um, just trying to think then. Any question? <laughs> you want to do it the ordinary? Do it. Have anything to do with sport? <laughs> Harry Redknapp. I say that right. Did does he? Did did you know? Harry is obviously a legend. Um, and I'm just. I would want. I, I just love to have, have well, love to to sit down and, and ask him how, what it was like when he went from um, Portsmouth and took over then at Southampton. What what was the first week like that that got um, unveiled that he was unveiled as the Southampton boss? You know because um, you know that they're, they're great rivals and I would love to 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 get to see how Harry. You know, handled that situation. Yeah. We'll pass it along. I would just like to say a big thank you again to everyone who listens to our podcast. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Please continue to leave reviews and pass our podcast on to your friends and family. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Michael. We really enjoyed speaking with you, and it means so much to us as a school to be able to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for your very, very thorough questions. <laughs> I hope that didn't feel like an interrogation. No, no. <laughs> I'm uh, really, really impressed with, with the, the podcast you're putting together. And thank you for choosing me as one of your guests. Much appreciated. Thank you, Michael. Really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Cheers. Thanks, Here we go. I'm going to get some dinner. <laughs> <laughs>